Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, I would like to introduce today a concept of um, similarity in three-dimensional space. This is the part of the Unizor.com um, set of lectures uh, on advanced mathematics for high school students. Uh, and basically this is very much similar to similarity on the plane. I mean the same concept of scaling factor etc. Um, there are a couple of maybe uh, not very significant additions which I would like actually to introduce for three-dimensional space and that's why um, it, it will not be a, a long lecture or anything like that. So I would like to um, um, remind you uh, certain principles of uh, scaling and similarity but it would be really great if you go uh, to the corresponding lectures in the plane geometry. Um, there are many different problems uh, which are solved for related to similarity and scaling, etc. So I think it would be really very, very beneficial if you will uh, familiarize yourself once more with the um, similarity on the plane. Okay. Now, 3D similarity. So, first of all, we introduce a concept of scaling. Now, scaling, um, sometimes um, there is another very scientifically sounding uh, name, homothety, homothety, I think. Um, so, scaling is kind of a simpler word, and basically what it means is the following. Um, now, we are talking about three-dimensional space. So, first of all, you have to have a point, let's call it X, which is a center of scaling. Then, for any other point in the space, we do the following. First, we choose certain number, real number. It can be positive or negative, uh, but not zero. Let's say the number is 1.5. Doesn't really matter. So, for any point in the three-dimensional space, you connect it with x, and you extend it further in such a way you choose point M1, M, uh, M prime in such a way that lengths of XM multiplied by this factor F is equal to lengths of XM uh, prime. Now this point M prime should be chosen um, on the same side from X as point M for positive F for positive factors. Now if the factor is negative, let's say it's minus 1.5, what do we do in this case? Well, we extend it but to the opposite direction. That's where our M prime will be. So the length would be the same except I would probably should add absolute value of F. So Point M uh, prime is chosen on the same side from X on this line, XM line, for positive factors on an opposite um, side from the point X for negative factors. And the lengths from X to the new point should satisfy this particular um, equality. So there is nothing new here. It's exactly the same as um, on the plane. That's the definition. Now, that's how we um, transform the point. So, on this, during the process of scaling, this is step-by-step -step instruction of how to uh, transform a point. Now, let's say you have um, a segment. Okay. I will use positive F just for simplicity. So let's say you have a segment M N. So this is your segment. Now, to transform a segment using the same procedure of scaling, you basically have to transform each point on that segment. So let's go 
so this is n. <coughs> so let's go to the end point. So that probably would be m prime. That probably would be m prime. Now, um, what's important is, and we have actually proven that thing um, in one of the lectures um, on the similarity uh, on the plane, because if you have a segment together with this point, these three points define a plane. So everything actually occurs in that plane. Because if you have two points, X and M, which belong to this plane, that then entire line belongs. Same thing here. Now, obviously, if M and N belongs to this plane, then each point on this belongs to this plane. And that's why each point on these lines belong to the same plane. So we have plane geometry, basically. So everything is happening within a plane defined by these three points. All right? So in, this, um, in, in one of the lectures on plane uh, similarity, similarity on the plane, um, we proved that the image of the line is a parallel line. Now, as far as the segments are concerned, obviously, if this is um, uh, these are two segments which have a ratio of their lengths equal to f and these two the same then from the similarity of these triangles x m n and x m prime n prime follows that m n and m prime n prime also related by the same um, equal e equality m n multiplied by absolute value of the factor equals m prime n prime lengths so the length of the segment if it is proportionally increasing and the transformed segment during this scaling is parallel to this one and that's basically the picture um, of, uh, of this transformation of scaling. Now, there is nothing new as far as the three-dimensional space yet. So what's the new? Well, the new is transformation of the plane in the three-dimensional space. So let's imagine you have a point and a plane. A center of the uh, scaling and some kind of a plane. So question is if this is a plane and each point on this plane I transform now obviously you understand that it's supposed to be a plane now how can we prove that the plane is transformed into a plane well actually relatively easy because we can always take two lines on this plane, let's say this line and, and, and this line. Now, their image would be other two lines, as we know. So now, what I'm saying is that every other point on this plane would belong to the plane defined by these two lines. Now, um, it, it, it's quite obvious because all uh, the length is proportionally increasing so we can always um, talk about uh, um, similar triangles uh, so whenever we have something like this triangle it will be uh, transformed into um, another triangle with all the lines parallel and um, since we know that this point belongs to uh, this plane now this point belongs to this plane obviously and this one also so everything in between also belongs so every line on this particular plane is transformed into a corresponding line on this plane defined by our two initial lines so basically that's the 
relatively trivial explanation that the plane goes um, the plane goes to the plane. Just choose two lines, reflect them, transform them using the, the scaling, and they uh, will be two lines, as we know from the plane geometry, right? Right, and they define the plane, which is an image of this plane. And then for each line, for each point, we can very easily build some kind of a triangle like this and uh, show that the image will be on that plane. So the plane goes to a plane. All right. What's el what what else is important uh, as far as uh, scaling is transformed? Now. Um, I can actually do a little bit more. Um, I can actually talk about similarity as a concept. So what is the similarity in three-dimensional space? Well, I can say the two different um, objects in three-dimensional space are similar if there exists some kind of a scaling of one object, which means there is a center of scaling and the factor, which will transform it, maybe not to another object, but to an object which is congruent to another object. Congruence in this case means that maybe we have to turn it a little bit after. Um, so let's just consider, for instance, a square. So this is a, a cube, rather, a cube. Yeah, let's have a three-dimensional case. Okay, so this is the cube. Now, and this is a cube. Okay. Now, how can I transform this cube into this cube? Well, let's just measure the um, the edges. Um, divide this edge into this to get some kind of a factor. Now, using actually any point in space as a center and this as a factor, I will reflect each point of this uh, cube and I will get something like this. Now, since I have chosen the scaling factor, which is a ratio between this and this, between the edges, this resulting cube will be of exactly the same size as this, maybe positioned differently in the space. But again, that's, the, that's what congruence actually means. So I can always take this cube, if it has, if it has exactly the same edges and, 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 and obviously angles, I can always um, somehow turn it, rotate it, and convert into into this cube. So basically, um, to the degree of congruence, if one object can be scaled to another, congruent to the one which we are looking for, then the objects are similar. Now, in this case, congruen co congruence means that we can shift the resulting object, we can rotate it, and actually we can also asymmetrically reflect it, because symmetry also is considered to be a congruent transformation. So that's how we can convert one into another. So if such a scaling exists, which transforms object C to some object C prime, and the scaling requires center and a factor. And if this object is congruent to our object eta, then C and eta are considered to be similar. So that's the definition of similarity. Similarity is based on existence of the transformation of scaling which means existence of a center and a factor, which will transform one object into another, which is congruent to the one which we need. Now, here's an interesting point. Now, let's say 
object C is transformed into C prime using X, F, center and factor, which is similar, which is uh, congruent to eta. So that's what C similar to eta means. Now, if I will take eta, maybe transform it a little bit um, using some uh, congruent transformation, which means I will rotate it, shift it, etc., into um, C prime. And then I will use a transformation which has exactly the same center but 1 over F as a factor. What will I have? Well, obviously I will have C, right? So if I convert this object into this, If I convert this into this with a factor f, I can convert this into this. So this is my xi, this is my xi prime. I can convert this into this with the factor 1 over f, right? If this is double, this is 1 half. So which means that if object xi is similar to object eta, object eta is similar to object xi, which means we have a symmetrical relationship. So the similarity is symmetrical. If one object is similar to another, then that other is similar to the first one. So that's called sym uh, symmetry of, uh, of this relationship. Another interesting point is obviously any object is similar to itself. Right? Why? because I can always choose any point as a center and the factor of 1. The factor of 1 will convert object, every point of this object, into itself, right? If you have an object and I have a center, then this point is converted into itself because the factor is 1, right? So the length is multiplied by 1. So that actually co is called reflexivity. The, simi uh, the similarity is reflexive, which means any object is similar to itself. So it's reflexive and it's symmetrical. Okay, fine. Um, what else? Angles. All right, angles. Now, since we preserve, well, since we proportionally increase um, the size of the segments, then any angle which can be included into some triangle with any point of uh, center of scaling will be transfer transformed with every with every factor so this triangle will be transformed into this triangle let's say factor is 1.5 approximately in this case now obviously these triangles are similar because everything is proportional which means that the angles are preserved. Now, this is the plane geometry, but dihedral um, angles, which is a three-dimensional angle, angle between the planes, they're also preserved during the um, transformation of scaling. How can that be done? Well, again, that's kind of easy, because if you have two planes, and angle between them okay so these are two planes now what is dihedral angle dihedral angle is measured by the angle between two perpendiculars to the intersection one perpendicular within one plane another perpendicular in another plane so the angle between these two perpendiculars is 
actually a measurement of the dihedral angle right but if I will scale it to another so the line of intersection will be parallel obviously the plane will be parallel it will be just further let's say that would be our plane but now this point will be translated into this one now this line would be parallel and this line would be parallel this belongs to this plane and this belongs to this plane and the same thing here so the angle will uh, be exactly the same because these lines are parallel scaling transforms a line into a parallel line so that's why the hedral angles are also preserved okay next two topics are very important and not very uh, difficult at all now let's talk about the area so for instance we can have a prism and we have area of all the uh, all the faces of this prism right how the area is transformed in the three-dimensional space well that's kind of easy let's take a small square with a side equal to one and let's take a scaling with a factor f so for instance this is my so I'm scaling this twice that's how it will be okay this is my result well obviously it will be a square because all angles are preserved and the lengths of the segments are multiplied by a factor of f right well actually absolute value of f so what does it mean it will be a square now what will be the side of this square well if this side of this is is one then this one will be one times f which is f well actual absolute value of f just in case i have chosen a negative f and what will be the area well the area would be f square so what happens with our square of a unit length? The area of the square of a unit length is multiplied by f square. So that's the um, that's the, the ratio. So every line, every edge of the square, every side of the square is longer by absolute value of f, but the area is f square. Okay, what if I will choose another square? Let's say square instead of n, instead of one unit length, I will have one over n. Now, what will be my, uh, the side lengths of the resulting? Well, uh, absolute value of f times one n. So th th that would be my length, right? So what would be my uh, area? Obviously, the area would be f squared divided by n squared, right? If f over n, absolute value of f over n is a side, then this is the area. Now, the area of the initial uh, square is obviously 1n. So, the ratio is again f squared. So, any square of 1 over n actually is transformed in such a way that the area is multiplied by f square okay now this this is a square how about um, any uh, flat polygon for instance you have I don't know, hexagonal and using the center you transform it into another hexagonal which is kind of bigger something like this this is a transformation and again the factor is f what happens with the area well let's do it this way let's consider just the concept of the area the concept of the area was um, defined using squares actually first we put like unit squares everywhere wherever we can Then we have something 
which is not really filled up, we can take a smaller, let's choose n equals to whatever, one tenth, and put smaller squares around. And gradually we will fill up the whole area with squares of smaller and smaller and smaller size. Now, I'm not pretending this is a rigorous proof, but in any case, you definitely should feel that this process can be um, continued to any degree of precision. I mean, choosing significantly smaller, smaller and smaller squares to fill up whatever remains unfilled, we can actually approximate the area of the uh, hexagonal with certain number of squares of different size. And since every square is transformed by this rule, multiplied, the area is multiplied by f square, then the sum of these obviously is also uh, multiplied by um, f square. And the sum of them is with any degree of precision approximates the uh, area of the, um, in this case, hexagonal. Which means that area of any polygon can be um, considered in this transformation as multiplied by f square. So this is basically the rule. In as much as every segment is transformed by absolute value of f, as far as its length is concerned, every flat polygon, or not even polygon, it can be a circle or ellipse or anything, add any flat thing which, which has certain area, is transformed in such a way that the area is multiplied by f square. So that's my point. Area is multiplied by f square by the scaling by the factor f. Now, volume, that's the next thing, right? It's also the same kind of concept. First, we will start with cube. We start with a cube of the unit lengths. Okay? Now, whenever we transform it, if this is the one, the new one, the transformed cube, well, it will be cube, right? Because everything is retained and proportional. So it will be of a size absolute value of f. The volume of a cube. Well, by definition, we know it's multiplied. It's a prism, and from, from the uh, concept uh, of prism and its volume, we, we know that the, it, it's uh, the result of multiplication of three dimensions, one, two, and three, and each one of them is f, so it's absolute value of f cube. Now, that's the unit. How about if it's one over n? the size of the um, of the of the edge. Well obviously it would be absolute value of f over n here. And the volume of this thing would be again the multiplication of f uh, absolute value of f over n three times which is this. And this guy has a volume one n cube. So again the factor is f absolute value of f cube. So that's the factor when we are talking about cubes. And the same exactly consideration. If you have any kind of an object, a pyramid, a prism, a, a cylinder, whatever else, we approximate the volume of this figure with unit cubes. Then whatever is not filled up, we reduce the size of the cube let's say one-tenth uh, of, of, of something, some unit, uh, centimeter, or inch, whatever. And smaller and smaller, and that's why we approximate uh, to any degree of precision, we can approximate the volume of this three-dimensional figure with our cubes, in elementary cubes. And since um, every cube is transformed by this uh, scaling, in such a way that the uh, volume is multiplied by uh, absolute value of f to the third power, then 
the same thing is is applicable to any three-dimensional object its volume during the scaling is multiplied by a factor uh, absolute value of f to the third degree and uh, I would like actually to pay um, attention to this interesting detail a segment length of the segment is multiplied by absolute value of f area is multiplied by f square and volume is multiplied by uh, absolute value of f cube um, and that's related to dimensionality of the set because the segment is a one-dimensional um, object some kind of a flat polygon is a two-dimensional object and something like a pyramid is a three-dimensional object so dimensionality is related to this power one-dimensional multiplied by absolute value of f two-dimensional f square and three-dimensional f cubed isn't that interesting so dimensionality and this power is very much related and whenever uh, something more advanced like geometry in n-dimensional space is um, uh, uh, started we can see that there is a concept of a volume obviously in n-dimensional space and in the scaling procedure this would be exactly n-dimensionality well that's it thank you very much and uh, good luck <laughs>